The state of emergency in Lytton, B.C. is now over. This is two years after a massive wildfire destroyed most of the town. In June 2021, you'll probably remember, this wildfire killed two people. It destroyed 90% of the buildings there, and it forced 250 residents to leave. The state of emergency had been in effect ever since, and so far, no homes in the community have been rebuilt. For more on the future of Lytton, we are joined by the mayor, Denise O'Connor. Welcome back to your morning. Good to see you again. Good morning, Anne-Marie. Your council voted to lift the state of emergency, and it formally ended yesterday. So what had to happen for the village to feel ready to take that step? Well, you know, we've been ready for, for a short while now, for the last few months. Um, we, we kept it on because of the construction work that was going on in the village with the debris removal and the soil remediation and the archaeology, all of those pieces. There was heavy equipment in the, in the town site. Um, so we kept the fences up. We wanted to keep people safe. Yeah, keeping people safe, I imagine, would be important. But we're showing pictures of rubble and debris. And I remember the last time you and I spoke, you were talking about how the rebuilding was slow and about how even though you stayed in the town, you had to drive past burned out parking lots or, or buildings that used to exist that no longer do. Um, I understand that there's been a lot of difficulty in getting things rebuilt, including a rule that every property owner had to do an individual archaeological assessment. How did that hold up the rebuild? Well, you know, it took a year before the debris was even removed, any of the fire debris. It took a full year for that. And it, it it's not that each property had to have an um, archaeology assessment. It's actually that what they did was they, um, they had every property do soil remediation, which means removing toxic soil, testing soil, removing it. And then once they disturbed that soil and dug down, that's when the archaeology kicked in. So that's how we have all, we have the heritage branch in BC here where we have legislation that says you know when you dig down and it's a known um, area of of, um, of archaeology um, or heritage sig significance for first nations that archaeology assessments are done so two years is a long time for people to wait to return to their properties are you hearing that many people are planning to return i know last time we spoke you talked to people who weren't coming back yeah yeah it's a mix um i don't have the exact numbers but definitely there are people that have sold their properties and, and they've made a choice to move on, um, get on with their lives somewhere else. Um, but there are those that, that are in the process of, um, you know, ready to rebuild. They've picked out their house plans um, as well as businesses as well, some of those, you know. So it's a real mixed bag. I, I don't have the exact numbers. How do you think the town will look and feel in the future as people start to rebuild? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, the town's not going anywhere. It'll be back. Um, it's going to be brand new, right? It, it's not, our goal is not to have the town uh, for the world to look to a model community, but that's what really what it'll be mm -hmm. in, the, in the end, um, because everything will be brand new. Um, but I guess it depends on the people that move back and the type of community, you know, it's the people that will make the community. You're going to be mayor of a very different town in the future. Yeah, yeah, could be. You know, I was thinking about you a lot when we were talking to people from the Tantalan fires who had just started this process of leaving their homes, trying to figure out what to do next. What words of advice do you have for other communities across the country you know, who are in a similar situation? They're looking to rebuild and start their lives over after they've lost everything to wildfire. Yeah, I mean that's a really good question. I think there'd be there's so much, um, so many pieces and parts to that. You know, I would say um, uh, right away the governments to whether it's local governments or whatever kind of government to to reach out to the people because it's the people that that make up the community mm -hmm. and and those that are displaced um, they need to be communicated with they need they need to know that you're thinking of them and that you're concerned about them and that you're doing your best to try to get them back um, that's a huge piece and the other piece I would suggest is um, is to make sure you have good staff around you. Um, you know, we've learned from Lytton here that um, a small community like this does not have the capacity to deal with and to do all of everything that needs to be done, you know, in, in such a disaster. Make sure there are good people, good staff helping you along the way. Mayor O'Connor, I know you're still mid-process, even two years on from the rebuild, but I want to thank you for continuing to check in with us, letting the country know how you're doing. Thank you, and thank you for, for having me on today.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.